John Marston. Hello. Tyrant overthrown. Black Ops was born. Yes, an old new one. You called Spatchcock? Well, who's asking? Who do you think is asking? Listen, partner. You stay cool, or I'll cool you down by putting a hole in you. You been practicing that line all week, fool? Don't make me come over there and teach you a lesson. Man, I hope you shoot better than you act tough. And that fool really will lose some money. Now get up and fight! to work then. So did you get the deed? Go, be on your way. Another adventure awaits you, I'm sure. Good luck. Go. Ain't this a beautiful spot? Sure. What are you doing here? My accounts. I'm an accountant. Is that so? In a way. What's your name? You know, it's the darndest thing. I can't remember. Tell me your damn name and where you know me from. Well, I know you're from Mexico. I know you're from back out west. Oh, I know you from all over. Tell me your name or I won't be responsible for my actions. Oh, but you will. You will be responsible. This is a fine spot. See you around, cowboy. Damn you! Yes, many have. Excuse me, miss. Something wrong? Does it look like something's wrong? Well, you look kind of upset about something. Perhaps you don't understand what it's like to be disgraced as a woman. To have people gossip about you and turn from you in disgust day after day. <laughs> people can be real unkind, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm Clara. I used to be a nanny for a family here in Blackwater. The father, he was always so charming. And I, fool that I was, fell for him. Mrs. Thornton, his wife, kicked me out on the street as soon as I started showing. Mr. Thornton turned a drink, not even a farewell, or a dollar. But I have nothing. They will surely take my baby from me. Perhaps you could find the dissolute bastard. Get even a few dollars for me and my baby to find a home. I would be so grateful, sir. I'll see what I can do. Excuse me. You know a girl named Clara? Michelle? Was she one of the waitresses around here? No, she was a servant at your house. The only servant we had was that wee darky girl, Sarah. And she left to join our people up north. <sighs> no, she helped raise your children. You and her had an intimacy of sorts. Look here, laddie. I'm not sure what you're accusing me of. 
I'm just here to enjoy the tables. Note here, aspersions against my character. I understand you want to keep this quiet. Just give me a few dollars so she can set up a modest household for her and the child. You put in your mind, laddie, or you're just a common criminal. The nerve of you! You think you can blackmail me or insult me over this piffle? You! Outside! No! Hello there. Hi, sir. Careful, officer. Looking for some action, Marston? I doubt you'll be needing this. Hey, Clara. Hello, mister. Got you some money. Oh, you are very kind, very kind. And how's Harold? How's my Harold? Didn't go so well. I'm afraid he's dead. Dead? <gasps> Unfortunately so. I, I, I must go to his grave. Afraid I don't know where that is. Oh, he'll be buried in the cemetery in the family plot. If I hurry, I can, I can make it to his funeral. Hello there, sir. You look like a man who can do an honest day's work for an honest day's pay. Then looks can be deceiving, pal. Perfect. As honesty is, in my business, the worst policy. I work for our well-respected governor, Nate Johns. That makes sense. Now, there is a certain individual spreading nasty rumors about Mr. Johns. I'd like you to put a stop to this vile gossip and malingering. Suppose I can handle that? For the right price? Now, this individual has had the misfortune to be photographed enjoying some rather inappropriate company. Been seen with a local whore. Take these photographs to him. After you take care of business, return to me, and I'll pay up the reward for your services. You're doing great things for your state, dear friend. You should be proud. What do you want? Hey there, fella. What do you think of our... Governor, Nate Johns. Nate Johns? Why, that no good lying, backstabbing bastard, I'd like to see him horse whipped. <laughs> Why you ask, friend? Need to make sure I had the right man. Would you care to take a quick look at a couple photographs of you coming out of a fine place of not much repute? What? Ah. Uh. <laughs> Ah, uh, as I was saying, uh, before I was so rudely interrupted, Nate Johns is a fine, fine man and an even better governor. And I consider it an honor to call him my friend. <laughs> Wise man. Come on! Come on, easy 
I'm here to see Mr. Ross. 107, 109. Edgar Ross. 113. Upstairs on the right. 114. 115. 116. 117. Mr. Marston, so glad to see you. How was your journey? Where's my wife and son? Being well looked after. Well looked after. I want to see him. Mr. Ross wants to speak with you. We've had some important developments. You want me to take out a gun and blow a fucking hole in your head right here? <clears throat> right now? You want that? Mr. Marston. You want that? Mr. Marston, I ask you to calm down. Why? Why? I did what you asked. I got you Williamson and Escuela. It's over. Stop playing games with me. No one's playing games with you, Mr. Marston. But if we were to play some games, there'd be some interesting ones we could play. Thanks, sir. Like hanging you for murder, or confiscating all your property, like that little farm of yours, or, or having you put in an electric chair. Those are the sort of games we could play. But we choose to play a different game. So calm down and play along with us. Where's my wife? <laughs> you know, I forget, but I hear it's very nice this time of year. <sighs> Mr. Marston, please, I've never insulted your meager intelligence. Do not insult mine. We've done this little deal for your freedom in exchange for all your men from your old gang. You gave us Williamson and Escuela. We still don't have Vanderlyn, but now we know where he is. Then go and shoot him. No, sir. I want you to shoot him for me. And then I'll let you be. The last thing I want to do is make martyrs out of all these people. He could be killed by some petty squabble by another lowlife. <laughs> we believe Vanderlyn just holed up with a group of renegades near the wreck of the Serendipity Riverboat. Ah, <sighs> yes. Another group of renegades. Obviously, the first group, your group, has well, shall we say, been disbanded? <laughs> <laughs> disbanded. Anyway, Mr. Ford and Mr. Marston, shall we go? Oh, Mr. Marston, your wife and son are, are doing well. Let's both try to ensure things stay that way. Okay? After you, sir. Oh, Mr. Marston, one more thing. This is for you. You're too kind. See, I have nothing but your best interest at heart. Let's hope it doesn't go off by mistake. 343. I, I have a patent for that, sir. This is an outrage. Oh, Mr. Marston. <laughs> You're alive. Hello, Wes Dickens. <laughs> Thought you were headed to Peking. Um, so did I. So did I. A long story. But now it seems I'm being put under arrest and charged with narcotic possession or some other such nonsense. Ross, have him release this man. Why? Because he's a harmless old fraud, the kind of man that built this country. And because he helped me get Williamson. Did you hear that, officer? The man's a hero. Let him go. Come on, Marston. Moral degeneracy waits for no man. Let's hurry along. <laughs> 344, 345, 348, 3. 
Head for the wreck of the serendipity, Mr. Fordham. It's not far now. The old serendipity wreck has been used as an occasional criminal hideout for years. We were informed that Vanderlyn and his gang are making camp there. We'll stop on the cliff above, and you and Agent Fordham will go on foot. I'll stay with the vehicle and keep watch. And you'll do as I say, Marston. Don't try anything stupid. Oh, I think he knows what's at stake. Don't you, Mr. Marston? Let's find Dutch and finish this. Right. Let's go, Mr. Marston. Keep quiet and stay close. Yes, sir. Vanderlind is the priority. We go in, take him down, and get the hell out of here. Quick and clean. You leave Dutch to me. We don't want you getting that suit dirty. If you step out of line, even once, well, I hope you're aware of the consequences. Seems real quiet, don't you think? You tell me. Maybe Dutch caught wind of things. That informant better not have been lying to us. Keep your eyes open. They are open. I don't see nothing. Yeah, it doesn't feel right. This place is usually teeming with lowlifes. Did you hear that? Go see what's happening up there. I'll wait here. Those screams are coming from somewhere. Over here! I found him! Good God, that's her informant. Gnostis, what the hell's going on here? It's a trap! Shit, Marston! You'll have to carry this man! I don't think you can walk! Come on. What? Come on, we need to get him to safety! I see him!
Let's get back to Agent Ross. God's name is going on. Marston, lift this fellow into the back seat. Put him in the car so we can get out of here. Let's go. There might be more of them. down there. There was a trap. They were waiting for us. And who is this savage? A prisoner? This is the informant, sir. Do you speak English? Uh, uh yes he does, sir. He's the informant. Nostas. Don't get snarky with me, Fordham. We found him tied up on the boat. Then they jumped us. Nice of you to help us out. Hell of a plan sending in two men to take on an entire gang of outlaws, especially when one of them's an office clerk or social secretary or some such. Just shut your mouth! just gave out. Well, fix it, you fool. We need to get this man to a doctor. Of course, sir. It's Dutch's men. Marston, we'll hold them off. Fordham, we'll fix that damn engine. Can't see any more of them. Fordham, are we ready? Yes, sir, I think so. Come on, let's get back to Blackwater. Damn, that was close. We're lucky. We should take the Indian to Professor McDougal. See what he can get out of him. Good idea, sir. I just can't communicate with them. Thank God for that. So, this is the office of an anthropologist named McDougal. He was thrown out of Yale for a degeneracy. We should tell you something. Indeed, but he's been helping us deal with the natives in this area. They see him and they presume we're all idiot academics. Huh? Give me a hand here, Marston. Ah, Mr. Ross, uh, Mr. Fordham? Good day, good day. What on earth's going on here? Kid got shot in the leg. Beat up pretty good. We'll send a doctor. Now, McDougal. Mm -hmm. uh, 
We need information from this fellow about Dutch Vanderland. Can you see what you can find out for us? Do my best, sir. Make sure you do. <laughs> Professor McDougall has been a good friend of the U.S. government, Mr. Marston, just like you. Why don't you see if you can help him in his study of the native problem in this county? That's a good fellow. What a pleasant surprise, Mr. Marston. An informer just told us some interesting news. Our mutual friend, Mr. Vanderlyn, is about to pay call on his bank manager. What do you say to having a little financial discussion with the fellow? This way. Let's get up on the roof. We'll have a clear shot at them from there. That door is the only way in and out of the building, so cover it tight. Do you see those horses to the left by the building across the street? Dutch's boys hitched them there. They'll have to run that way to make their escape. Don't start shooting until they're out in the open. If we spook them, they might retreat back and hole up inside. Don't shoot till I give you the signal. Keep your sights trained on that bank door. Boy, I've got a delight in finishing you. Don't shoot till I give you the signal. Someone's coming out. He's unarmed. Hold your fire. They shot him dead. They're coming out. Gun them down. Take out those snipers in the way. to the bank with Hopkins and Manny. Get Dutch. Be careful. There may be some innocent people there. We can take them! Let's move! They'll cover the windows from up top! This way! This way! Shoot the lock off that door! Let's go! Watch out for hostages!
Oh, it's nice to see you, John. Hello, Dutch. How's Abigail? Well, I hope. Ain't seen her for a while. Because you've been chasing me? Let the woman go, Dutch. Of course. Of course. How's your little boy? He ain't so little now. No, oh, he must be what? 15? 16? Doesn't time fly? Don't adjust. It's over, man. Of course. Of course. I surrendered, John. You're the master now. I've been my master since you left me to die. We all make mistakes, John. I never claimed to be a saint, but equally, I never took you for an errand boy. Just trying to help my family, Dutch, by making compromises we all have to. Now let her go. It's over. You want the girl, John? You always were the romantic sort. You know, gentlemen, this man here, oh, he married a whore. Used to ride with us. We all had her. Oh, but he married her. And you know that makes him a better man than us. He's a better man. Have the girl, John. Easy, Dutch. She's a parting gift from me. No! God damn! Let's get after him! I don't see him! What the hell happened in there? This is your fault, Marston! You got a gun too, Sheriff. You waited too long! Next time I'll just shoot the girl. That's enough! Come on, let's find the best! Get on your horses! I just saw Dutch make a run for it! Yeah! Yeah! Hey, what happened in there? We saw Vanderlyn escaping from some men. He stole off with the bank manager in an automobile. Let's just say, Dutch ain't gone and got himself saved. He killed some poor woman. There's an old logging camp further down this road. It's been abandoned for years. My guess is that's where they're headed. Come on, follow me. Push! So that's the great Dutch? What a role model! The man who made you who you are. I guess so. Has he changed? No, still the same crazy bastard he turned into. How was it seeing him after all this time? On your heart strength? It kind of reminds me of you. The violent piece of shit who went and confused himself with God. Isn't that sweet of you? And now you must kill him. Your side is chosen. My side ain't chosen. My side was given. I'd kill you a hundred times before I killed Dutch. If it was an option. Hallelujah! I think we're finally reaching an understanding, Mr. Marston. Anyway, lawmen or army? We are neither, Mr. Marston. But I have the authority over both. You bastards can't ever give a straight answer, can you? There's the car. They must abandon it and continue yeah. on foot.
Where's Dutch, Marston? He got away. Uh, scared to shoot him? Too much to handle? When the opportunity presents itself, I'll put a bullet in him, don't you worry. Won't like myself for doing it, but I'll do it. Ah, good man, good man. You know, at the end of this, you'll probably get a medal. I know I shall. Mr. McKenna, what are you doing here? Thought you were running a film company. Oh, Marston, how the fates have spurned me. The muses cajoled and lament my foolish nature. The hubris. The hubris! It gets the best of us. I've lost everything. Every last dime I invested in that studio is gone. The production was delayed by weather. That fool Spatchcock fell in love with the cameraman and ran off to Canada. Damn you, the gods of bad weather! And the hearts of vain men. Guess I'll have to go and make dreams elsewhere. Good luck. It'll take more than luck to stop me. <laughs> <laughs> 